Hello, I'm here to tell you a story that will change your life. And this story applies to anyone who has asthma. And over 2 million Australians have asthma, so listen closely. The story concerns something that all asthmatics need to know about, no matter what your age. It does not matter whether you live in mountains with clear dry air or near the ocean where there is humid salt air. It does not matter if you are rich or poor, or what language you speak. It applies to all people with asthma. Our story begins with science. And the question, what so people with asthma do differently to others? Now because asthma is seen to be related to breathing, let's begin with that. If our theory asked if people with asthma breathed differently, a good place to start would be how much do healthy people breathe per minute. Luckily, this is already well known. In the medical text by W. F. Gnung, it is stated that breathing in healthy adults is 6 liters per minute. Other sources confirm this, but let us just accept it as true, for now. Wow! I did not know that. Now my question is, how much do people who get asthma breathe per minute? That is a great question, and the answer may give us a powerful clue about asthma. There are lots of clinical research papers, and all show people with asthma breathe much more than 6 liters. One is from New England Journal of Medicine that showed 12 liters. That was back in 1968, and confirmed many times since. One is Journal of Applied Physiology in 1995 that said 15 liters a minute. Wow, that is interesting. It is also interesting that people who get asthma don't usually know they're supersizing their breathing all the time, it just feels normal. Another fact is that this overbreathing is also present in people who get sleep apnea, heart disease, diabetes, panic disorder and other awful conditions you do not want. Wow. I'm confused. I thought breathing more was good for me. And does this mean that breathing too much actually causes all those diseases? Good questions. Breathing too much for your activity is called hyperventilation. And doctors have known for a hundred years it is not good for us. Your question about whether overbreathing causes those conditions or is there as a result of them is for the researchers to figure out eventually. For now let's talk about asthma. So if our theory says that all people with asthma overbreathe, usually without knowing about it, then our question is, what happens to their asthma when they stop doing it? Yes, that would be a great question. What happens to asthma symptoms when people reduce their overbreathing? It might help explain anomalies that doctors cannot explain now. What kind of things are you talking about that doctors can't explain? Well, the most obvious is how come people can grow out of asthma, or how they can get asthma for the first time later in life. Breathing levels might be the missing link. I had never thought about that. Well, what does happen when people with asthma reduce their overbreathing? Well, according to several published clinical trials, asthma symptoms reduce predictably and dramatically when people are taught to reduce their overbreathing. The Medical Journal of Australia in 1998 published that people taught to reduce their overbreathing had amazing reductions in their asthma symptoms. It showed that after being taught BU take breathing. Their need for relief medications like Ventolin dropped by 90% in a short time and was sustained. Wow! 90% reduction in relief medication. Are there any other trials that confirm that it was not just a fluke? Yes. In 2000, 2003, and 2008, clinical trials showed similar dramatic results. It appears that learning how to reduce overbreathing has very positive effects on asthma symptoms. Just so I am clear. You are saying that now that I realize that I am overbreathing, I can learn to reduce it, and my asthma symptoms will improve. According to the studies, yes. And can you see from this information how people might seem to grow out of asthma?
or seem to get it later in life. Yes. Without knowing it, they might be reducing their overbreathing and their symptoms go away. And some people might overbreathe when older and get asthma for the first time. Isn't it interesting how a different theory produced different questions, the answers to which give new strategies that may give profound results for asthma symptoms? Your next question might be, having discovered this new information what will I do now? There are a couple of things to consider. The first is to be safe and always talk with your doctor before changing any medication. Your first priority is always to stay safe. You will want to find out more about this in the simplest way you can. The creator of this film wrote a simple book based on the breathing training mentioned earlier. It is called How to Grow Out of Asthma as Quickly as Humanly Possible by James J. Hooker. It is available at Amazon.com or from GrowOutOfAsthma.com. Mr. Hooper suggests you start with this simple book, and then, depending on your condition, seek out an experienced Boteco instructor and attend a full course. The book has the full instructions for teaching yourself how to reduce your overbreathing, and explains how that helps you to grow out of asthma, on purpose. Thanks for watching. Please share this on Facebook and on Twitter, and everywhere you can. You are now on the leading edge of asthma so be sure to help others. Bye for now. Remember to not change any medication without talking to your doctor, and I will see you in the next video.